Today I'm sitting down with Jameson Garabedian from Notel. He is the environmental brand manager and we'll be discussing workplace branding. So Jameson, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, of course. Um, so let's jump right in. Tell me about Notel and their brand story. Yeah, so Notel was founded in 2016 by Amal Sarva. Um, he was sharing a workspace with a few friends. They all own different companies. Um, and he really was thinking about the need for individual workspace outside of um, co-working space. Uh, and then when he explored the market more, he saw there was a big ask for it for medium-sized companies. And so he kind of took off from there. Yeah, people tired of like being jammed together. Exactly, yeah. Um, sharing amenities, sharing space, kind of being stuck um, with very small square footage per person. Yeah, and wanting their own like little space that's theirs. Exactly. How does Notel differentiate itself from the competition? Yeah, so like I mentioned, Notel really just provides um, flexible, tailored uh, workspace for our clients. Um, the clients have all their own branding. It's not Notel's branding at all. Um, and then they also get all their furniture t uh, picked out for them, specified for their work needs, along with a bunch of other services, including porter, food services, um, really turnkey. So we have a full team of designers. Um, from our fit out phase, um, from once a client picks a space in our portfolio, um, we have a full team of architects, interior designers, and including environmental branding design, which uh, our team does at Notel. Um, and so all the touch points in their space of branding um, is all from the, our client's brand book. How has Notel changed the way we think about corporate environments? So on Notel's platform, we really look at corporate environments as being very flexible. So that starts straight from when the client signs their lease. Um, it can be as little as one year. Um, and also our design time is very truncated. Um, so that means that we're able to get our clients in within about three months. Um, this really starts to affect the environment, um, not from an aesthetic value, which we still strive to get very high standards of aesthetics, quality, workmanship, craftsmanship, um, but it really changes the setup and the back end of getting the client in. But also I feel like to chime in, what you set you guys apart is like you change the dynamic of like cities because of like the short term leases and not doing like the five to 10 year leases. Yeah, so uh, any standard city or large city um, to rent an office space, it's usually about 10 years minimum on a lease. Like I said, we do about one year and then that also allows us to have many spaces around the city. So we're flexible when our clients grow. If they add 20 people, 30 people in a year, we're able to then look back into our portfolio of spaces and provide them with a new solution. And then we can also figure out what we missed on their last branding and recreate a better, a new space. How does Notel's platform affect customer experience? Yeah, so right now we offer two products. Both have a very truncated timeline compared to standard architectural builds. Um, we have our Agile HQ platform, which is a very, I would say, engaging experience more than our on-demand platform. More custom. Exactly. So Agile HQ is custom. Um, you work one-on-one -on -one with our design team um, to make sure that your space is completely your own, branded to all of your standards. Yeah. Um, These are a little bit longer leases. Exactly. And yeah, and so Agile HQ also because of that, because we're doing a little more work, we're um, really fitting out the space as your own. Yeah. The leases tend to be a year and a half, two years plus. Um, our other platform, which is on demand, um, usually only about a year, um, is still fit out with all your branding needs, all um, of your furniture needs. You still get some of the same um, turnkey solutions, but at the same time, it's a little more bare bones because we're expecting you to leave and move on to a different yeah. space. Well, the branding just more scaled down. Exactly. So like you have your logo, your distraction markers, yeah. kind of everything that... Your main sign is, also because, your per yeah. yeah, a lot of the people that are coming into On Demand have left, have just left the co-working space. Exactly. It's, it's more of our introductory pr yeah. uh, platform. And it's kind of like everyone has like stepped up, right? So then after On Demand, then you're going yeah, into... Yeah, exactly. And it's a nice introduction into the no-tell 
um, experience too because you get to see how it works, how our process works, get used to the timelines. Uh, that's also another large thing that our clients aren't used to because the timelines are so short. But your timelines for on-demand are three um, months? For, we like to get, for on-demand, we like to get our clients in within a month. Okay. Yeah. Um, with Agile HQ, our clients usually move in within three to four, three to four months, depending on lead times of products. Yeah, which is unheard of for yeah. like new construction or anything like exactly. that. Exactly, yeah. Um, architectural builds can take up to a year, year and a half through planning, construction, everything. Yeah. And that's why we work together. Exactly. So yeah. you bring us on for on-demand and custom work and things like that. Exactly. You guys have been a great partner for on-demand. We've really made a easy platform um, that we can now offer to our clients, um, more of a catalog. We're a good team. Yeah. <laughs> what elements are needed to connect the brand to this space? The elements that we like to provide for our clients are the standard introductory sign when you first walk in, um, kind of for your wow moment in the reception area, um, the privacy vinyl, the wayfinding, um, even super graphics on the wall, um, patterns, etc. But then we also like to create some really amazing brand touch points. And those brand touch points might look a little complicated, they might be dimensional, they might have some um, green elements to them. Um, but at the end of the day, we really like to work closely with our manufacturers like 71 Visuals um, <laughs> to try to engineer great solutions of how to have them seamlessly flow into the space and how to really have them easily install. Um, and then at the end of the day, because we do turn over space um, at a one to three year period, um, how we can deinstall them pretty easily yeah. also. I think that's how we work well together, because figuring yeah. out like what you've designed, what you have rendered, and then figuring out how we're going to fabricate it. Exactly. You know, and sometimes we have to, if, you know, we're st sticking close to design, or if we have to value engineer, just figuring out like what works in this space. Yeah. Because you never really know. Yeah, and I think that kind of really speaks to our design team and how they really work closely with you guys to figure all that out throughout the design process, while also trying to translate the needs of our clients. Definitely, I think they're super talented and great to work with. <laughs> Seriously, though. <laughs> Tell me about some exciting projects that Notel is currently working on. So we have two very large internal projects that we've been working on over the last couple months. Mm -hmm. um, one is geometry and one is neighborhoods. Neighborhoods is a great third space for our members. Okay. So they're dotted around in the cities that we're in. So they range from spaces called commons, which is kind of um, daily amenity spaces that okay. switch over to event spaces at night or our members can rent out or have access to. And then we also have spaces called studio. Okay. Studio is more of a heads down or um, larger conference room spaces okay. that our clients can use, whether they have all hands and they don't have enough space in their um, floor plan to really host maybe people from out of town, or they just need to have like a team gathering yeah. and a brainstorm yeah. session. And everything's local and super close to where their office is. Exactly, is yeah. So we're really trying to put them either in the same building or around the same neighborhood that our clients are in. Great. And what about geometry? So geometry is a modular architectural furniture product that we're coming out with. Mm -hmm. um, it is a range of furniture from sit-stand desks to um, modular conference room space to phone booths. Um, and we're all making it very easy for our branding team to then customize for our clients. Um, so that includes metal surrounds, so then yep. we can use um, magnetic skins. skins and have you guys UV print a lot yeah. of cool patterns and stuff Do like on a there. cool direct print, pops on, and then when someone leaves, exactly. take it just right comes off. right off. So everything's very versatile with this new kind of line that we're coming out with. Um, and we're looking to expand it as we keep growing and looking into the needs of what our clients yeah. want in their spaces. Yeah. And then the conference rooms, obviously, the huddle booths, then you can do anything yeah, on the glass that you exactly. want. Yeah, exactly. So the conference rooms are really meant to supplement um, hard builds in our space. Yeah. So usually we'll try not to add any more hard build to the space, um, just to keep low cost both for our client and for us. And so our solution to that is making these modular conference rooms that can either be offices, private offices, conference rooms, huddle space, um, ideation space, anywhere where you need private or semi-private. Um, so what industry trends do you see that are successful now? 
So a lot of industry trends that we're seeing revolves around employee health because we're seeing that it really directly um, affects employee productivity. Um, it can be small stuff. It doesn't really have to be big pushes within the company or things that we can provide. Um, but it's things like adding plants, green walls, um, less corporate branding, so less straying away from your bright signs and stuff like that, but more atmospheric things, um, patterns, prints that reflect the brand's culture, but also have some sort of health and amenities yeah. built into it. So a mediation room, exactly. your wellness room, your mother's yeah. room. Yeah, exactly, and things like that. Um, extras that people really haven't thought about before in the industry. So like you mentioned, um, wellness rooms that can be used for new mothers or meditation. Yeah. Um, looking at also just like built out of what our offerings are for foods and snacks mm -hmm. and for the clients and then um, bringing it back to branding. Um, calming areas that really promote product. Yeah, kind of have like the employees like join together. Exactly. Or if they need a little time alone, yeah. it's like, here you go. Exactly. And then also because we're moving towards large open workspaces, we're getting a lot of sound dampering too that we provide back to like the geometry and stuff like that um, without having to have the build out because the sound doesn't transfer. How do you define design? So I define design more as a problem solving tool. Um, there's always aesthetic value, but I think when we look at design, especially nowadays, we're really looking at customer solutions and kind of empathetic solutions to what they're trying to achieve. Okay. So what originally attracted you to design and were you always creative by nature? Yeah, so I grew up in a household where my mother was a designer and then um, went over to teaching. Um, so I was always drawing, exploring, creating, making, um, taking apart toys, yeah. playing with Legos, and then um, took a lot of art classes in high school. And then when I went to college, went into industrial design, um, and then really found that I like system design and got my master's in strategic design management. And now, here you are. And here I am now. <laughs> What inspires you to design? So I think I've always been inspired by the early industrial designers like Raymond Lowy, mm -hmm. which always thought of products um, that people use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I really like that way of designing, of kind of thinking about problems people are needing to solve yeah. and that they run into every day. We need more designers like you. Exactly. Sometimes people are designing way outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. It is fun. <laughs> what is an overlooked or underappreciated idea in design right now? So I think taking empathetic problem solving and kind of looking at design solutions and that way of thinking and applying them outside of the design realm. I think there's a lot of industries that can benefit from design thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and how it's really being underutilized. What's your take on open floor plans? Um, I like the trend towards open floor plans. Uh, I think it ran away for a little bit. I think a lot of people got rid of their private space because there needs to be private conversations, there needs to be non-disruptive rooms or locations. Um, I think now we're starting to bridge the gap between the cubicle broken up floor plan where you can't see the other wall across the office and the completely empty industrial room. Yeah. Um, and I, I think Notel is really always trying to solve that problem, especially with the floor plates that we get. Um, and we're really looking to our geometry collection to help us solve that. Yeah, and I feel like you guys have a good balance throughout all the spaces. Yeah. There's like your open space, but you still have like your section off. Exactly, I mean, we're never gonna get rid of um, enclosed conference room, private rooms, yeah. stuff like that. There's always going to be a need for it. Um, what we're really looking towards now is kind of the intermediate areas. So what piece of pop culture or media has the most like interesting notion of what like the future might look like design-wise? The rise in VR mm -hmm. and video game and virtual simulation um, is going to have a pretty profound effect, I believe, on design. Um, it's going to really be able to have us explain and show what we're thinking and design concepting to our clients in a very easy way 
Um, and hopefully it gets to the point where it's really cutting down the design time of drawing, um, being on CAD, being on um, any sort of computer program that we're able to really just paint a nice vivid picture for our clients of what they're getting. Yeah, it'll definitely be speed up the time. Just even going yeah. back and forth. Exactly. If you want to change something, Concepting, you can swap it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Concepting, being able to change colors at the touch of a button, have the clients be able to walk through the space without even being in their space, so it cuts down tour times for offices. Jameson, I'm going to give you some fun questions. So, what is your favorite quote? Um, my favorite quote, even though I am a designer, is always Henry Ford's, the client can have any color they'd like as long as it's black. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, your favorite curse word? <laughs> <laughs> I just think a hard, strong fuck. That's it. Always good. Always good. Everyone knows it. Fits every moment. Every moment. Yeah. Yeah. If you can do anything other than what you're doing now, what would it be? I've always wanted to be a pilot. Really? Yeah, I think it would be fun. That's cool. Commercial pilot or like no, private? No, I've always, I mean. Or like an Air Force. I want to be, I'd be like a fighter pilot uh, and then move oh, over. Oh, Top Gun. Yeah, like Top, top Gun, gun top style. Gun. And then I'd yeah. move over to like private and just fly like rich people around the country. Yeah, so smart. What is um, one thing people don't know about you? A lot of people actually don't know that I'm an only child. Oh, really? See? Well, no, I know that, <laughs> but I, I thought my, oh, really, I thought oh, it was going to be like. Oh, a lot of people, like, no. It actually comes to a surprise for a lot yeah. of people. I thought it was going to be that you're a bro. That I'm a bro? I feel like people see right through that facade. <laughs> <laughs> you're writing your obituary. One line. To sum it all up. up. Yeah. Or you can switch it and do like something on your tombstone. <sighs> That's your... I just thought I'm really bad <laughs> um, One line to sum it all up. He did the best he could. <laughs> <laughs> fucking tried. <laughs> I fucking tried. <laughs> Love it. Perfect.